Hey everyone, uh, we could tell a lot about a reaction by uh, determining uh, the voltage uh, of the reaction. Uh, so what is the electromotive force um, that is produced by it? Uh, if uh, we have a positive E value for a reaction, that means that the reaction is spontaneous. Uh, that is, it's going to favor the formation of products. When equilibrium is established, there's going to be more product than reactant. So what that means is that the K value uh, for that reaction is going to be greater than 1. Uh, and then uh, if uh, we have a negative E value, then the reaction is going to be non-spontaneous. That means the reaction's not going to go very far. Uh, you know, you might uh, get a little bit of product, but mostly after equilibrium is established, it's going to be mostly reactants left over. It favors reactants, i.e. Uh, the K value is going to be less than one. Uh, there's, uh, you know, products over reactants, but it's mostly reactants. So products is less than reactants and K is less than one. But uh, if uh, the E value is equal to zero, uh, then uh, it's not really spontaneous or non-spontaneous. It's kind of at equilibrium. Uh, it doesn't really favor uh, at that point uh, products or reactants. Uh, so uh, there might be just as much product as reactant. Uh, the K value uh, might be equal to one. You know, uh, one over one. You know, product just as much product as reactant. Uh, that would give you a value of one for K. Uh, so uh, we can see uh, that there's a relationship between uh, the value of the voltage of the cell and the equilibrium constant by uh, taking a look at these equations. Uh, first, uh, we can determine the voltage of a cell from uh, the equilibrium constant uh, for the reaction of that cell. Um, e is equal to uh, 0.0257, uh, which is kind of derived uh, by the temperature and the value of R and one other constant. Um, and then uh, it's then divided by n. Uh, so n uh, is the number of moles of electrons in the balanced chemical equation that are transferred. So that can be either uh, the electrons on the left or the electrons on the right. Those are the same thing. Uh, and then uh, after we do 0 0.0257 divided by n, we multiply by ln of k. And then uh, you can manipulate that equation uh, to get uh, the equilibrium constant by knowing the voltage of the cell uh, and uh, n, the number of moles of electrons in the balanced chemical equation. Uh, and you can get all that uh, k by taking e to all of that. Um, so, you know, in your calculator, e caret, you know, caret, uh, and then the voltage of the cell times n over 0 0.0257. So uh, let's go ahead and now solve a problem. Uh, determine the voltage uh, for this reaction and the equilibrium constant for this reaction. Um, given uh, that these two half reactions that are uh, on the uh, reduction potential chart uh, are going to have these values for their redu reduction potentials. All right. Uh, so basically all this right here is just what's on the reduction potential chart, but we're interested in the uh, E and K for this reaction. Okay, so uh, the voltage of the cell is equal to uh, the reduction potential of the reaction that occurs at the cathode uh, minus uh, the reduction potential of the reaction that occurs at the anode. We saw last time uh, that at the cathode, which starts with a consonant, there's going to be the reduction that also starts with a consonant. And at the anode, which starts with a vowel, there's going to be the oxidation, which also starts with a vowel. So we can know which values uh, for reduction potentials to plug in here if we know uh, what is at the uh, cathode, i.e. what is being reduced, and then what is at the anode, i.e. what is being oxidized. So uh, taking a look at the balanced chemical equation, uh, we could see that Fe3 plus is turning into Fe2 plus. Uh, so 
uh, that one's pretty simple. Uh, there's no other uh, atoms attached to the Fe, so we just know the oxidation number of iron is starting out as plus three. And then afterward, it's ending up as plus two. So going down an oxidation number is a reduction. Uh, so iron, uh, its reduction potential is going to be plugged in uh, for the cathode. All right, so E cell is gonna be the uh, standard reduction potential of iron minus the standard reduction potential at the other half reaction um, cell. Uh, so that's gonna have the reduction potential for Mn2, oh, actually MnO2. Uh, so another way to uh, know that the anode uh, uh, where the oxidation is happening is gonna have MnO2 is to think about the oxidation numbers of the things. Uh, so you're starting out with Mn plus two, so we're starting out with a plus two oxidation number, but then afterwards Mn is gonna have a oxidation number of plus four. Whoa, how do we know that? Well, remember back in October, uh, we would solve for the oxidation number of things. There's, you know, one uh, manganese in here, we don't know what its oxidation number, and there's two oxides, and we know its oxidation number is minus two, uh, and all of that adds up to an overall charge of zero, so x is equal to plus four. Wow, remember that. Uh, so going from plus two to plus four, uh, we can see that manganese is being oxidized. All right, so maybe you don't want to deal with figuring out oxidation numbers. Another way to do this is to say that, you know, looking at the standard reduction potential chart, when MnO2 turns into Mn2+, plus, MnO2 is reduced, it's gaining those electrons. But the reverse reaction is happening in uh, this overall balanced chemical equation because Mn2 plus is turning into MnO2. So the reverse, Mn2 plus, turns in MnO2, releases two electrons, that's an oxidation. All right, so um, either way it should work for you in determining whether the manganese stuff is oxidized or reduced. All right, so uh, basically now we can solve for the uh, voltage of the cell uh, by plugging in the reduction potentials Uh, into uh, cathode minus anode. And so we get negative 0.45 volts. Oh, wow, that's negative? Uh, that's a non-spontaneous reaction. Now, I know on the last uh, homework problem, uh, many people in, uh, let's see, it was number, I think, 4B, uh, they actually uh, tried to figure out what the spontaneous process was, and they uh, would you know, use the diagonal rule to figure that out. Uh, so, but this uh, reaction is not necessarily spontaneous. Uh, it's not necessarily gonna have a positive uh, voltage. Uh, and that's why we had to figure out what is at the uh, cathode and what is at the anode. All right, uh, so now that we know the uh, voltage of the entire cell, uh, we can calculate uh, 4K uh, using this equation. So you plug in the, volt, uh, uh, the voltage of the cell, E is negative 0.45 volts, uh, and you plug in 0.0257, but what is N? Okay, so going back to the balanced chemical equation, uh, we can kind of figure out how many electrons were transferred in it. That is gonna be N. Uh, you know, two Fe3 pluses turned into two uh, Fe2 pluses. Every time an Fe3 plus turns into Fe2+, plus, it needs one electron. But that reaction happened twice. Uh, and so uh, there's two electrons uh, that are being absorbed by the iron. Um, and so N is equal to two. Another way to look at it is Mn2+, plus turned into MnO2. Just, you know, one MnO2+, plus turned into one MnO2. So when one Mn2+, plus turns into one MnO2, two electrons are released. Uh, so N is equal to two. So uh, when you plug in 
two, and then you do e to all of that uh, power, then you get k is equal to 6.18 times 10 to the negative 16. Whoa, you're not going to have a lot of product here. k is much less than 1. That makes sense. Uh, this is a negative e cell, so it is non-spontaneous. k should be less than 1.